intenção. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Carnival of Souls, a presented by Inked Insomnia, Ace Virtual Events, and the Beast Node. Today, we're going to have a short interview with Carlos Mendoza III. He is the art director of Spirit Halloween. So I'll have Carlos come up and join us. Hi, Carlos. Hi, guys. Thanks for popping in. So um, first, we'll just start off with, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are and what you do over at Spirit Halloween. Well, I do a lot of this. That's amazing. <laughs> That's a mask, isn't it? Oh, wow. Yeah, there we go. This Woo! is the scary part. This is the scary part. <laughs> This is actually the scary part. <laughs> that, that's that's awesome looking. Yeah, so just give us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm originally from California. I'm a 15-year veteran in the toy industry. I've been working for pretty much a lot of the big companies in LA um, and started working with, um, you know, with Spirit this past year, uh, actually the, the year before. And um, that was kind of like a really odd experience because I had to move my entire family from California to New Jersey, uh, which is where I'm at now. Um, but now it's like I get to design toys that are much, much larger and, um, you know, I still do weapons and stuff like that, which is really fun. So I just get to play with a lot of crazy uh, Halloween stuff pretty much year round. So Halloween for me is like year round. So that's the pretty cool part about it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really, it's a lot of fun. It's cool. Yeah, I'm very jealous about that. I love Halloween. <laughs> so yeah, let's move on to um, how you got the position that you're in. How did you get the job um, over there at Spirit Halloween? Um, well, I you know I post a lot on LinkedIn. It was like a uh, I don't know. I, I started treating it like I do my Instagram. I started posting my Instagram stuff, and then I just wanted to see what I can do to kind of keep. Um, I guess the momentum going with, you know, with my art in another, you know, another platform. And so I use LinkedIn as a, as a, a part of an extension of my, uh, my social media presence. And so, uh, you know, I was posting monsters and stuff because that's what I do in my free time. I was designing stuff for SpongeBob SquarePants at the time. And um, so I needed an outlet to do all my crazy stuff. So I would post all my crazy stuff on LinkedIn. Uh, and, you know, I, you know, I got noticed on there and I, somebody uh, that actually worked with me in, in a previous job, uh, you know, said, hey, you know, we're looking for somebody that does this kind of stuff. And so it became a, a very interesting conversation right up until they told me it was in New Jersey, because that's when I was like, oh, dang, like I, I, everything sounded fantastic. You know, everything was like super cool. Like, oh, we do weapons here. We do masks. We do. And she was like, talking like um, i mean she was just like selling this thing like i'm like i was already sold by the time she said we're looking for somebody uh with your skills i um i i i was i was over the moon i was really excited right up until she said it's in new jersey and i and i i, I couldn't sleep for like two months uh and uh you know it just it was something that i, I really thought long and hard about you know my my you know, my creativity, my career, my future, and, you know, yeah. my kids and all that stuff. So it was a lot to think about, a lot to process. And so I think it was, um, it was very much something that I felt I can give my family a little more of my time. And also I get to do still what I love to do. So, you know, it became a lot more easier for me to accept the position and the move because it was something that I was going to be able to extend the, uh, you know, the love of what I do to my family and uh, and friends too, because all my friends love Halloween stuff. And again, it's something cool that I can pass along and they can all enjoy it with me too. So it's kind of, it's really fun. So yeah, I took it it was really fun. So I've been here now for about a year, you know, going on two years this coming February. So uh, trying to get used to the weather here in New Jersey and the East Coast, but other than that, it's cool. I really like it. No, that's awesome. That That's quite a move. And that's a, really an inspiring story, especially since a lot of people here are from LinkedIn and just seeing that what what LinkedIn can really do for someone um, that that just gets out there and puts themselves out there. That's awesome. And I absolutely love your work. I, thank, thank you, you. so much. I We're, and myself and the other owners are so honored to have mm. you here doing this interview. I appreciate so, it. Um, 
I would, I think my next question is going to be like, what really um, inspires you when you create your pieces? Is it, um, is it some, some element um, out in your world? Is it, it drawn by emotion? Do you kind of take things from um, uh, like, like other artists, like kind of like get some inspiration from them or how do you, how do you um, create your pieces? What is your inspiration for those? Um, well, it depends on what exactly I'm designing, right? So, like, if it's something like a mask, for example, I really love to, I love to challenge myself of what our competitors are doing. Like, I love to see what they're doing, what they, how far they push something, and then uh, how can I make something very, very scary or disturbing without, without, you know, um, I guess affecting the consumer at our store level. Gory. <laughs> But you definitely want to be, yeah. you know, um, you want to push the envelope of, of the design of characters, expressions, stuff like that. So I think if I can get away with certain expressions, um, also paint jobs, uh, I like to design around stuff that can definitely be, um, you know, new and fresh in the Halloween, um, you know, genre. Especially when people are hunting for masks, there's like hundreds and thousands of masks in every single store. And so the thing is, the challenge is to actually try to design something that is uh fresh and new you know what i mean not like if you do a clown you have like fifty thousand clowns and you have to be the one that originates something fresh all the time so that's challenging and so that inspires me to try to push for the next the next level of of, of clown horror you know what i mean and so uh -huh. it keeps you on your toes all the time so i think that's the stuff that inspires me is just to you know to look at uh, movies and um trends what are people scared of you know what i mean like phobias um, that sort of stuff is, it, it's interesting because you kind of get into the human psyche at that point. You know what I mean? What does scare people? Some people are scared of simple clowns. Uh, and some people are horrified yeah. by horror clowns with all this crazy teeth and all this stuff. So it just depends really. I mean, the, the spectrum is so broad in Halloween, which that's what makes it so much fun is that you can literally do anything, uh, and scare the pants out of anybody. So yeah, I'm, I'm inspired by a lot of different things, cartoons, um, you know, uh, movies, stories. Um, just you know, depends. Like, just depends on what it is. Yeah, it could be anything, really. I mean, mm -hmm. inspiration really come from anywhere. So. Oh no, that's. I mean, you know, some people draw on certain things, and some some people have like a multiple. I'm the same mm -hmm. way as I have, I have multiple ways of being inspired. Um, okay, then uh, my next question for you would be, what kind of advice do you have um, for aspiring artists? Um, someone who is trying to maybe break into the industry or even um, artists that are already seasoned and just need a, a little bit of advice. What, what kind of advice would you give them? What helped you move um, forward? Um, <clears throat> I think always, um, always challenge yourself, I guess is the main thing is like, uh, always make sure that your portfolio is always up to date, even though if you're not looking for work, um, keep your portfolio always tight and ready. Um, because if you start challenging yourself, you'll grow more and your portfolio will no longer be relevant if you keep growing. Right. So uh -huh. it's important to always have, you know, um, your, your portfolio almost like a, like, you know, like locked and loaded. Anytime somebody wants anything, whether it's vehicle designs, whether it's illustrations, you know, um, movie posters, you name it, the spectrum is broad in our industry. And, but our skills have to continue growing. And I think it's important for any artist to uh, always improve. Every year, your portfolio should be updated and changed every year, regardless yeah. if you're at your best job in the world. I do it to this day. I love where I work, but I still improve my portfolio in my illustrations, in my designs, my, my personal art. So if somebody ever, ever asks me, hey, um, you, know, you know, we're looking for a designer to freelance to do this or something or whatever, and or if something was if I move on from where I am, I know that I can I can securely know that I can have a really solid portfolio piece because I constantly keep updating it and I constantly keep improving my art. So improving your art is, is, is definitely the key thing that it's important in any any environment uh, in creatives for sure. That yeah, that is a very good point. And yes, refreshing um, your portfolio is super important. Um, and also, you know what, try, I'm, I'm sorry, and also trying things, like trying things, you know, like, you mean like, 
if you're not a good illustrator and you're just a one trick pony and you just do one particular thing, challenge yourself, try to do something else to bring more value to yourself as well. It's super important as well for myself. Like, um, I'm not an animator by any, by any means, but I am working on something on the side that is very animated heavy and the styling is different from my original style. So I'm challenging myself in character development to do something different than what I'm used to so that I'm also versatile in other areas so that if it's like, again, if I need to design characters for whatever it is, I can always, I feel confident that I know I can take that genre on without just being a horror guy or I'm just this guy, or I'm just going to do this. Or if I don't, if I do vehicles and I want to do vehicle designs, I'm like, okay, cool. I have a portfolio for vehicle designs. I have a portfolio for characters, illustrations, and so on. So I have a broad spectrum. So whatever you're looking for, you can kind of go down that, it's almost, I treat it like a, like a supermarket, right? Like uh, in every aisle, you got different genres of foods. You got Asian food, you got Hispanic foods, you got all kinds of different foods in, in these aisles. But your, your job and your portfolio is to really just stock it with images of stuff that people are going to be looking for and be like, you know what? Oh, I like the way he drew this car. And they'll, they'll, they'll pull that and say, hey, I like what you did here. Uh, can, you, can you work with me on something? And, and that kind of broadens things out. But if your if your aisles are empty and you just have one thing on the shelf, uh, you know, you got to start thinking about really, you know, filling the shelves up a little bit in your portfolio so that people have a little more to pick from. You know what I mean? And it's good. It's it's good for your brain creatively. It's good, you know, just for fun too, just to kind of like take it as more of a like a Zen time for yourself, some drawing time for yourself, some some you know you know something that'll just elevate your art. You know what I mean? And and your career, it could it could definitely take you to another place. Amazing. No, um, that those are such great great points and great tips for for new artists and well even established artists. Yeah, established artists. Yeah. 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 So. Um, Anybody can come view your art at your table. Um, cool. So Carlos is the spotlight artist and his table is in the middle of the floor plan and um, it is filled with just his art. And you guys can also pop around the room. Thank you so much, um, Carlos. I'm just gonna take you down right now and then address um, the audience for the cool. rest of the presentation. Bye guys, hope to, hope to meet you so guys much. later.